Welcome back, guys. This is the final game of Callus Invitational 3 play-ins, one way or another. This is the decider. Game 3, Bad Dummy and Charm Flash. That is Zamiato. Winner is in the main event. Loser is out. Lead my low tick on the bottom. Bad Dummy for the third time. Charm Flash on the top for the third time. He's got Heracross. And there is a Mega Horn to kick things off and Hypnosis, respectively. Both of those imperfect accuracy, but both of them cooperating. My Lotic here almost certainly will go for a cover, and it's going to be on Charm Flash to figure out what he wants to do. But that was a high variance turn one. Hypnosis, specifically, there is so huge to how this game plays out. It is the difference between my low dick is already in a bad way and Charm Flash has a huge tempo advantage versus the extremely dangerous Heracross is now potentially not going to do anything for the rest of the match. Could be completely neutralized. So that was a very high variance turn one. Heracross is going to stay in despite being asleep and Milo does get recover off. Will Charm Flash opt to keep Heracross in again? I mean, in theory, Bad Dummy goes to something here that threatens the Heracross. Has to be very careful, though, because there's also a lot of variance if Bad Dummy goes, Hey, go Doug Trio, and Charm Flash goes, Cool, I woke up, Brick Break. They ended up bolt switching, and we have Magneton on Celebi here. Interesting. Not sure where I am with either of these guys. Uh, clearly an offensive team for Charm Flash, and lead Hera plus Celebi would make me instantly think that Charm Flash probably has a Porygon 2 in the back, and then that would also make me think he probably has at least one more thing that cares about Dougie not being there, such as a Raikou, such as... Yeah, I mean, a T-Tower, a Metagross, a Rachi, something along those lines, but I would suspect... Porygon 2, and at least one other thing that hates Dugtrio on Charm Flash's end. Bad Dummy, I'm not so sure. Uh, this could be Magdal. Uh, now with the lax being shown, that doesn't actually change much. It could be, it could still be Magdal. It could also just be physical offense. It could just be Magneton, plus like the, the two that we've already seen, a Salamence, a, a DD Tar, something along those lines. So... Either physical offense or Magdal versus what I think is just an offensive team with a Porygon 2. So it is Magdal from Bad Dummy. BP out. Now actually might be a decent time to show the Porygon 2, trace the Levitate, have nothing to fear. Uh, he could also BP to like an offensive Coon or something like that. There's a lot of ways to threaten Claydol. Its typing is just garbage. It's weak to everything. So there's a lot of things that could come in here. Heracross, normally, if it weren't to sleep, would be a wonderful thing to bring in here. He's actually going to bring it in anyway, even though it's asleep. It's possible that Bad, that Bad Dummy's team is a Doug Trio. It doesn't seem overly likely, but it's definitely possible. Good scout there from Charm Flash. That was really good either way. Uh, if Bad Dummy had gone psychic, it does like nothing there which is what happened, and if Bad Dummy had gone Dugtrio there, who cares, because the Salabi at 100% will live the non-adamant Dugtrio hidden power bug and can either Baton pass out or, even worse, one hit KO it back, and we see that he does have HP Grass, so he actually would have killed Dugtrio had Bad Dummy gone for that. It's not a lock by any means that Bad Dummy has Dugtrio. We have seen this team, or this kind of team, a lot in these play-ins, just the all-in on Curse Lax team, the double trapper plus doll. I personally am not a fan of it. I think it's way too all-in on Curse Lax, which is a poke that I could take or leave in the current meta. I'm definitely a Snorlax player. I've used that mod a lot over the years. Really a fan, but uh, I don't know. In this current very offensive meta where every good team has at least one, usually multiple answers to Lax, I, I'm not saying don't use Lax, but... Yeah, I'm not saying don't use Lax, but I'm saying don't go all in on Lax. I'm saying don't make Lax your only win condition. So, like, if Bad Dummy's last two, for example, were, like, Duck Trio and, like, a supportive Celebi, a Heal Bell Celebi, something like that, I wouldn't care for that, because Lax would be his actual only way to win. 
And I definitely, definitely do not like that kind of team. But this is all speculation. Like I said, this could easily just be standard Magdal. The last two could be like Metagross plus Tita or like a Salamence plus Metagross, something along those lines. There very well may not be a Dugtrio in the back for Bad Dummy. Flygon took a lot of damage there from Body Slam. It is gaining lefty, so it's not banded, but it's obviously not bulky either. He did manage to avoid Para, and he got some HP back from the uh, Bleach Seed, rather. He's going to go sub here. Goes Earthquake. I thought he would Toxic there. Ice Beam. Did we know about that? We did not. That's going to be the first time. So, Hypnosis Recover, Ice Beam. You would think that the last move is Surf. Could be Hydro Pump, but it's probably Surf. And to the shock of myself and the audience. Hey, look, a Porygon 2. Who would have known? Going to trace Marvel Scale, which, I mean theoretically could be relevant but probably not uh porygon 2 so we know that my load doesn't have refresh because the last move is going to be a water attack so porygon 2 is going to have either toxic or thunder wave could even have both in theory but my load needs to get out of the way because it can't deal with whatever status move and he's actually going to go ice beam here i'm not sure what the prediction i guess he thought claydol was going to come in anticipating an electric attack which is why he went Ice Beam, but he is incorrect on that. It's going to be Lax. If neither player brought Sand, that is going to make the Lax that much more bulky. Wow, that is... I hope that was a prediction as opposed to just not realizing what the ability is, but going Toxic into a Lax is a little bit questionable, to say the least. Like I said, maybe he was anticipating a double switch, and trying to catch something specific, but that is going to be a swing and a miss. Granted, there's not a lot of punishment back. Body Slam just did 25%, woohoo, and did not even para. Body Slam doesn't para here or the turn after either, so it didn't get the flag on either. There's been a lack of paralysis from Body Slam. Finally, he gets one now, but doesn't matter with the Leech Seed going. And Selby's just going to stay in anyway. Feels very comfortable here. But he's going to switch out on my logic, you would think. We know that he has Ice Beam. And here's the P2 with pretty much nothing other than a Freeze to fear from my logic. And it is Ice Beam, but the Freeze doesn't come. And there is the obvious recover to get the Porygon 2 back to 100%. Both players with two unrevealed still. Lax begins cursing up. Selby has a pretty good amount of Leech Seeds. What does he have left? 12 of them after that, 13 of them after that, yeah, 12 of them after that. Leech Seed Body Slam, Hidden Power, which is almost certainly Grass. Not sure why he Body Slammed again there, despite the presence of Leech Seed. Fishing for a crit, I guess, just giving himself a one-turn window to BS him. He's really stubborn with these Body Slams. Where does he think it's going? Even a crit there wouldn't have mattered anymore. Is he trying to bait the Salabi to stay in so we can self-destruct on it? I'm not sure what he's doing here. Yeah, all we've seen are Body Slam and Curse, so I mean, it could have boom. Here's T-Tar. Sand is definitely going to make life difficult for the Lax. Uh, that's probably a poke that Bad Dummy did not want to see if he is, in fact, using the all-in on Curse Lax team. We have no idea what the T-Tar does, but he's very safe in this situation. Leech Seed still ticking down, and also the Lax just chose this opportunity to take a nap. It's so hard to know what kind of T-Tar it is. It could be just about anything here. It could be a substitute set. It could be a DD set. It could be mixed. Uh, I, I don't think Special Tar makes a lot of sense. Or I guess... No, nah, I... Of course he shows Pursuit, right, as I said that, but... No, nah, I'm actually walking back on that because you really want to remove Gengar, right? Like, one of Flygon's biggest counters in the game is Gengar, and then Heracross is not great against, like, a bulky Gar with, like, a Fire Punch or whatever. Oh, man, I was making a good point, but I can't miss that freeze. That definitely matters. Porygon 2 gets frozen on the way in on Nice Beam, attempts to thaw, and does not. But, yeah, in hindsight, Special Tire actually does make sense because the team really wants to remove Gar, not for the purpose of blocking Rapid Spin, uh, but because it is an issue defensively for what the rest of the team is trying to do. So there's definitely some pokes uh, with some status problems at the moment. 
The Freeze being the biggest one, but that Lax is not in great shape. I don't think he's killed a single sleep turn. Or no, he did. He killed... I'm way wrong. Man, I suck at this whole narrating thing. He killed both of his sleep turns. Hey, some days I'm with it, some days I'm not. The other day when I did that series live, I thought I did a good job. Today, not so much. Anyhow, Lax actually did kill both of his sleep turns. So he's going to wake up next time he has an opportunity. Full team is now revealed for Charm Flash, and he does not have a bulky water. I recognize this time, uh, this team too. So he's actually, unless someone is giving them to him, uh, he's actually just copying teams that were used in the previous Kalos Invitational. The the Heracross Moltres one belonged to Eden's Embrace, like I said. And this one I recognize as being a Cowboy Dan team. I've talked with Dan about this team before, and I think it's really cool. It has some issues, since it doesn't have a bulky water. So like an opposing DD Tower, for example can be really really tricky it is tbd whether or not bad dummy has that but yeah i don't know if someone this is relevant by the way leech seed and explosion trading doll and celebi but yeah i don't know if someone is feeding him these teams or if they were made public somewhere that i just am not aware of in like a team dump or whatever or if charm flash is simply copying them on his own to the best of his ability so we've got ourselves a 5-5. Two unrevealed still for Bad Dummy. There's still a lot of things that can happen in this game. I, I think the outcome here is unclear. Uh, one of the X factors is definitely when the Heracross wakes up. He's killed, what, two? Yes, he's killed two sleep turns. But remember, it was via hypnosis, not via rest. So we don't actually know when he's going to wake up. It is not on a set schedule. Flag on. And Toxic, nice prediction there. A little bit bold for Bad Dummy. That could, he could have actually lost the Magneton there for nothing. Goes Toxic, nothing happens. Heracross wakes up, rocks your world with Brick Break. But he felt confident there would be a switch. And he is correct. He's going to hit Flygon with Toxic. Heracross comes back now. Going to be a failed Protect turn. Is he now going to attempt to wake up? He can live a Thunderbolt or an HP Fire. But he certainly cannot sit in there and take them all day. And Charm Flash switches out again. Magneton does not have lefties this whole time, so he probably has Magnet, but he does have Protect, so he can stall for the toxic damage at least a little bit. And it's a mixed tar from Charm Flash here. He already showed Pursuit, but he now shows Brick Break. Gets out of the way, and it is Recover here, so... Porygon 2 is not threatened by this Milo, so he has an opportunity here if he so chooses to attempt to kill a turn, and he does get it. He does thaw out. So that status problem is gone, and Lax is also about to wake up, and there's not a lot Charm Flash can do about that either. And the Lax simply goes right back to sleep as the t tar comes in. We now know that it has Brick Break, but he does not go for that. He goes Heracross here, which is probably the best thing. To get in on Milo. And he wakes up for the Megahorn. Surf does big damage back. But Heracross is now awake and faster. And is a big threat defensively to Bad Dummy. Megahorn is going to come just short of the kill. Magneton at 1%. And he's not going to risk it. Bad Dummy unable to pull the trigger on this prediction. And get a hidden power off. Thunderbolt blanking on Flygon. This late game is getting exciting. I don't know who's going to win. This is still anybody's game, but this is going to be an intense one. Both of these players fighting so hard to earn that spot. Now, as I mentioned, uh, I know this team pretty well from Charm Flash. It is a Cowboy Dan team that he and I have talked fairly extensively about because I thought it was cool and it caught my eye when he used it. I know that it is weak to Dragon Dance Pokemon. That is reported from Cowboy Dan himself. DD Tower probably being the worst of all, but the reason that I bring this up is because I think even more likely than a DD Tower, Pokemon that Bad Dummy could have here is DD Ments in the back. And if he does indeed have that, the only answer Charm Flash is going to have is that Porygon 2. None of those other Pokemon are going to remotely deal with it. Flygon maybe kind of sort of could under different circumstances, but when he's at half health and poisoned, no bueno. So I think that Charm Flash needs to be aware of the state of the game and needs to keep that Porygon too healthy. If this is a DD Tower, this is actually a real problem too. 
I, I think you have to earthquake here if you're trying to flash, even if Bad Dummy is just baiting you. Like, even if Bad Dummy is like, hey, look, obvious earthquake, and he immediately pulls back here to, like, a Salamence or something. Good play for Dummy. Shit sucks, but I think you have to earthquake here because you just can't let this tower set up. You just can't. And Charm Flash agrees. And it is nowhere close to a DD tire. It's a Pursuit tire. This is not going to go his way at all. Pursuit doesn't even kill. Charm Flash takes a ton of damage from Earthquake and does not have a lot to show for it. Wow. He is going to lose his T tire to the poisoned low on its deathbed Flygon. I'm surprised he allows that to happen. Maybe he thought that Special Tower did not have a lot of use in this matchup, and maybe he's right, but I've got to think that he had more use than that, that there is more that he could have gotten out of a Special Tower than that. Wow. I don't know about that. That seems like a strange play. That almost makes me think the last poke can't be Mance, right? Because it's so obvious to make that play, to go to the T-Tower and then pull it back to the Mance. You go to T-Tower, you bait the crystal clear, obvious earthquake, and then you go to Mance. No, it's last poke Dougie. I hate this team. I think he's dead. I think Charm Flash has got it. I mean, he, he's all in on the last poke lax, and Heracross is dead here, so there is a chance here for Bad Dummy, but this team is just way too all in on lax. And know what's really, really weird to me? You're all in on Curse Lax, but you're bringing a T Tar. Like, I mean, the, the, the Lax is there to remove Gengar. That's fine. But, like, if your only win condition, your literal, your literal actual only win condition is the Lax, I really just wonder, are you better off with just an Umbreon? Seriously, that's not even mockery. Like, if the only purpose of the Tar is to remove Gengar because your whole team is built around setting up Curse Lax, then, yeah, I, I really almost wonder if you're better off with Umbreon because... That sand is not going to do him any favors at all. Uh, yeah, I mean, granted, Charm Flash brought it too, so it's not as if a bad dummy, you know, dug his own grave completely. Sand would have been in this game either way, but it just, T-Tar does not make sense to me. I really wonder if Umbreon would just be better. I mean, I don't like the all-in on Lax team at all. I just, it's it's just too many, it's, it's all the eggs in one basket. Not my kind of team. But anyhow, uh, back to the game. So, T Tower at 100% from Charm Flash, and we know that it is Brick Break. Is Lax asleep right now? It might be. And, and if it is, and he is zero, yeah, turns asleep zero. If he just rested and switched, if that's where we are, then he is so screwed. Here he is trying to recover, stall him out. He doesn't actually have Thunderbolt, he has Thunder Wave, but... I mean, I guess that could matter in the Lax matchup, but I, it, if the Lax, like I said, if the Lax has rested and not killed any sleep turns, he's screwed either way. Well, what a turn of events here. I'm really surprised by the by the T-Tire sequence. I I can't believe he just he let it go for basically nothing. There's the crit that he's desperately fishing for. That definitely could matter. So now Charm Flash, I think, needs to have Protect on his Magneton. No, he's going to go to T-Tar here and hope that that doesn't get crit either. And then he should be able to Brick Break him down. I think that's it. There's the Pursuit, which doesn't kill, but the Poison will. So Dugshare would have died either way. And yeah, there's Sleeping Lax, a couple of Brick Breaks away from a bad night. He killed sleep turn number one. Sleep turn number two. I think Brick Break knocks him out here. He would need like a bare minimum damage roll. And then a rest gets off. And then he PP stalls him out of all his Brick Breaks. But no. It is not to be. It is Charm Flash with the victory. A tight three game set. And a heartbreaker for Bad Dummy who had won game one in this series and had the opportunity, had two opportunities to win just one more game and be in the main event. He is going to come up just short. Both of our play-in matches are going to go to game three. Heartbreaker for Bad Dummy, who put up a great fight. All three games were pretty damn close. 
but it's going to be Charm Flash inching him out in the end, and he is going to be in the Callus Invitational main event. Congratulations, Zamiato. Looking forward to seeing you in the main event. That's it for now, guys. The next time you see a match from Callus Invitational, it is going to be in the main event, which starts on August 5th. That is Monday. I mean, who knows when I'm going to put this video on YouTube, but I'm recording this Sunday afternoon. It'll probably be on YouTube Sunday night, and it is a week from tomorrow. August 5th is when the main event begins. I'll have the pairings up the night before. I want to remind you guys, if you want to follow Callus Invitational, which is now about to begin, check out the description. The Callus Invitational Discord server link is in there. The Callus Invitational official thread link is in there. And also, I would really, really appreciate your subscription here on YouTube if you've not done so already. Finally, finally, last thing. I just want to remind everybody, you don't receive if you don't ask. I want to let you guys know that we are accepting donations for this event for the first time ever. The first two times out, I didn't do it. This time I am. Uh, the donations will support me and will also support the players and enhance the prize pool of the tournament. So if that's something you're interested in, strictly optional, hit me up on Discord. I'll let you know how to do that and we will get it done and I will make sure to give you the credit that you deserve. All right, boys, that's it. Great series. Congratulations to Zamiato, and I will see you guys soon with more content.